Have you ever wondered about the true identity of Rocky Mountain oysters? Spoiler alert, they're not oysters. Now that we've got your attention, let's dive into the story behind this intriguing dish from the American West. The origins of Rocky Mountain oysters, or cowboy caviar as they're sometimes humorously called, are steeped in the ranching traditions of the United States. As it turns out, this dish is a testament to the resourcefulness of the early ranchers who believed in wasting nothing. From this ethos, a peculiar delicacy was born. But what exactly are Rocky Mountain oysters? Well, brace yourself. They're deep-fried bull testicles. Yes, you heard that right. This dish is a culinary dare for the uninitiated, but for those who've grown up in the ranching culture, it's a familiar and even cherished part of their gastronomic heritage. Now let's talk about how these oysters of the Rockies are prepared. The testicles are first skinned and washed, then sliced thinly and flattened. After this, they're coated in a mixture of flour, pepper, and salt, and finally deep-fried to a golden crisp. The result? A dish that's crunchy on the outside, tender on the inside, and packed with a unique meaty flavor that's hard to compare. Eating Rocky Mountain oysters is not just about the taste, but also about the experience. It's a bold gastronomic adventure, a culinary challenge to step outside your comfort zone. And who knows, you might just find yourself pleasantly surprised by the flavor of this unconventional delicacy. As we leave the American West behind, we venture across the Pacific to another culinary wonderland. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate the audacity of Rocky Mountain oysters. It's a dish that tells a story of tradition, resourcefulness, and a daring spirit that's willing to explore the uncharted territories of flavor. It's a testament to the fact that in the world of gastronomy, sometimes the most unusual ingredients can create the most unforgettable experiences. Welcome to Japan, where we explore the intriguing world of basashi, a delicacy that's as deeply rooted in tradition as it is in flavor. This isn't your average sushi, we're talking about raw horse meat, a dish that might raise eyebrows in some cultures but is a cherished part of Japanese cuisine. In Japan, the consumption of horse meat dates back over a thousand years, to a time when horses were honored as sacred creatures and their consumption was a ritualistic practice. Today, basashi is enjoyed as a testament to the country's rich culinary history. It is particularly popular in regions like Kumamoto and Nagano, where horse breeding is a major industry. The preparation of basashi is an art form in itself. It starts with the selection of the right horse, often a draft horse renowned for its lean yet flavorful meat. The meat is then carefully sliced into thin, translucent pieces much like sashimi. It's typically served chilled to preserve the freshness and enhance the flavor. A plate of basashi is a feast for the senses. It's visually appealing, with its vibrant ruby-red color, and has a subtly sweet, slightly gamey taste that's truly unique. Accompaniments play a key role in the basashi experience. It's traditionally served with soy sauce, freshly grated ginger, and a smattering of green onions. The sharpness of the ginger and the tangy soy sauce perfectly balance the sweetness of the meat, creating a symphony of flavors that dance on your palate. Basashi isn't just a dish, it's a cultural experience that offers a glimpse into the heart of Japanese cuisine and its reverence for quality, tradition, and balance. It's a testament to Japan's ability to transform even the most unexpected ingredients into culinary masterpieces, with a dash of daring and a whole lot of respect for the ingredients. From the land of the rising sun we journey to China, where another unique delicacy awaits. In the heart of China, we discover a preserved delicacy that's as intriguing as its name suggests, the century egg. This is no ordinary egg my friends, it's a culinary masterpiece that has stood the test of time, literally. Let's delve into the creation of this unusual treat. The process begins with duck, chicken, or quail eggs. These are then preserved in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quicklime, and rice hulls for several weeks to several months. The result? A jelly-like egg with a dark green yolk and a brown translucent white. It's a sight that might startle the uninitiated but it holds a world of flavors that are revered in Chinese cuisine. The century egg isn't just an oddity to be marveled at. It holds deep cultural significance in China. Its name in Mandarin Pidin translates to leather egg, hinting at its unique texture. But why century egg, you might ask? The name is a misnomer, suggesting a hundred years of preservation, while in reality, it only takes a few weeks to a few months. The name evokes a sense of the enduring nature of Chinese culinary traditions, and the patience that goes into creating this remarkable dish. And how exactly do locals enjoy this fascinating food? 
The century egg is a versatile ingredient incorporated into a variety of dishes. It can be enjoyed as a standalone snack sliced and served with pickled ginger. It's also used in kanji, a type of rice porridge where its robust flavor complements the mild taste of the rice. Or it can be paired with tofu in a dish known as pidan dufu, where the contrasting textures create a delightful culinary experience. So there you have it, the century egg, a testament to the ingenuity of Chinese cuisine, an embodiment of tradition, and a tantalizing treat for the adventurous palate. From the intriguing tastes of China, we dive into a culinary experience that's not for the faint-hearted. In the bustling streets of Cambodia, we encounter a unique delicacy that will test your culinary bravery, tarantulas. In the Kingdom of Cambodia, the tarantula holds a significant place not only in the ecosystem but also on the dinner table. This tradition that might seem peculiar to some dates back to the harrowing times of the Khmer Rouge regime. Food was scarce, and the people had to be resourceful. Thus, tarantulas found their way into the Cambodian diet, and over time, they've become a delicacy, a symbol of survival and resilience. The preparation of these eight-legged delicacies is an art in itself. The tarantulas are first defanged and cleaned thoroughly. They are then marinated in a mixture of garlic, sugar, salt, and MSG, enhancing their natural flavor profile. Following this, the arachnids are deep-fried until they achieve a perfect balance of a crispy exterior and a soft, meaty interior. The result? A crunchy delicacy that is said to taste like a cross between chicken and cod. Now who are the daring gastronomes who relish this crunchy treat? Locals and tourists alike are drawn to this exotic dish, each with their reasons. For some, it's the thrill of trying something out of the ordinary. For others, it's a way to connect with the local culture and history. And then there are those who genuinely enjoy the unique taste and texture of tarantulas. They describe the legs as delightfully crunchy, the body is soft and flavorful, not unlike a crab. So whether it's the cultural significance, the intriguing preparation method, or the sheer thrill of tasting something so dramatically different, the Cambodian tarantula is a culinary adventure that leaves a lasting impression. It's a testament to the human spirit's adaptability and survival, and a reminder of how food can tell a story far beyond flavors and ingredients. As we conclude our adventurous journey, remember that each dish we've explored tells a unique story of culture, tradition, and daring flavors.